All right, hey everyone, Peach out here. And so now that you guys seen our live stream uh, for assembling the VR6, you know, putting the head, the timing, and all that, now it's actually to film, and we're gonna film showing you guys how to put the timing covers on. So uh, it goes lower and upper, and then the front covers and that we're going to do a couple DIYs. We're going to be doing the front covers and the rear covers as one. And then we're going to show you guys the valve cover and the oil pan as a separate DIY because there's other components that are involved in it. So um, there's a lower cover, which is down here, which is part of the crank. So we have to make sure before we even do all that, that we make sure that all the timing components are torqued to spec. So we're going to get that going next. <laughs> In page 15D-17, um, this is number 19 and 20 bolts. They're both torqued down to 15 foot-pounds. And then now we're going to go down to this guy right here. Using a five mil Allen. So we're going to go to seven foot pounds. Okay. inch pounds so we got inch pounds right here now these are the torque wrenches right here the torque ones these two these are 89 inch pounds These two on the lower guide are seven foot pounds. Sweet. Okay. So this one's 15 uh, inch pounds. 
okay so that's pretty much the gist of it uh we oh this guy right here this guy is the harder one um that guy is 74 foot pounds so you have to counter lock this one because the engine's going to turn so when you go this way you got to make sure you lock the engine on the back using the bolt um the crank bolt uh, as you turn um, you should be able to hold that gear so or you can put your old flywheel bolts in here and counter lock it with something in here as you crank it down so right now I'm gonna get this ready for And I'm locking, holding it from the crank on the front, and there we go, 74 foot pounds. Uh, before you install the bolt, make sure you oil this bolt uh, lightly, pop it in, you're good to go. So that's 74 foot pounds, and then I had to counter lock it with the with the crank over here, the front crank uh, pulley. That uses a 15 millimeter socket, by the way, guys. All right. So, next step now is to put our lower timing covers because we have all the bolts already done. So, we have these two, these two, these three one, two, three, this guy. And this guy that's everything that is involved in timing um, what's it called for hardware sake now we have to do the lower timing cover um, before you install your lower timing cover make sure that the surface around here is cleaned up with the razor blade same with here uh, because you are going to need to put some uh, sealant on here uh, we are going to be using uh, Victor Rains, um, it's a universal sealing compound that's uh, used pretty much for sealing oil pans, um, timing covers, and stuff like that. So very, very good sealant. Uh, this will do the trick for you guys. Um, for obviously for this one, <laughs> um, you poke the hole and get going from there. So we'll show you guys what to do next. So this is the lower timing cover and it only goes on one way. We removed the original uh, uh, oh, um, uh, seal or lower crank seal um, So because we're going to have to install the new one. Uh, you have to remove it before you install it, by the way. Uh, one thing you got to remember you got to do is make sure you clean your entire surface here uh, and here. Uh, we cleaned everything we could on the inside of this timing cover. Uh, same with this surface up here it has to be cleaned off. This is the mating surface for the upper timing cover So we got to make sure all these surfaces are mated uh, cleaned as cl as good as possible So when we put our new bead of a uh, RTV here or sealant um, It's going to provide a proper proper seal. So we're going to do a dry install just so you guys can see What we're going to be doing um, We also pulled out the um, on the upper cover the tensioner that goes here and we'll show you guys why so the upper cover is right here um they line up pretty much with these little metal pins right here you'll see this a little metal stub that sticks out here it uses that one and the one down below to line up or, or to get your timing cover lined up correctly just like that Now it, it's a it's a how can we say it's like a it's a hard fit so make sure you clean every if you don't clean everything really nicely this is actually really difficult to slide on because you're gonna have sealant in some place places that are not supposed to have sealant and it's gonna make it harder for it to go in we cleaned all the hardware here 
Uh, we also cleared out all the threads and everything that needs to be cleared out on the, on this process because, again, when you're reinstalling stuff, you want stuff to go in as smooth as possible and not have any damage. Um, so, very, very important step for you guys. So, here's the upper uh, timing cover. Same process. We removed the hydraulic uh, tensioner for the uh, upper tensioner. Uh, this allows for easy install. Um, this does not have any guide hardware, so just remember that. So you have to use this with caution. And because of that uh, tensioner, you'll see we're offset to the, to the right. So we have to make sure that the chain has a little bit more slack than it's supposed to. Um, I believe because we turned it, so we have to make sure we turn it back to have it to have a lot less slack than it has right now, because this has a lot of um, very little slack on it right now. So we're going to turn the engine to the left. And you'll see here the belt. Well, not the belt, but the, the chain is a lot looser is what we need. And this will give us the slack that we need so the timing cover goes on correctly. And that should line everything up beautifully. The way it's supposed to. So you have all these other hardwares. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, made sure you tagged and bagged everything you yeah. took out and separated. So when you reinstall everything, it goes back in its factory location. So this is where the main tensioner goes. This is a cam sensor location. Uh, we have a seal that has to go in here as well. And then obviously you're going to put sealant on here before this goes on. And sealant on the inside of this one as well. Not on the top because this is where your valve cover goes. There's no sealant that goes here. Your valve cover sits on this. Um, so I left all my hardware on top of this so we didn't lose stuff. Um, let's see here. What else do we need to worry about? That's it. And then obviously use all your hardware that has to go here. Once you have your timing cover, do not RTV the lower portion of your lower timing cover. That's going to be for the next DIY to show you guys how to do the valve cover and the oil pan. Uh, these guys are a little finicky. They're a little bit more difficult than others. So do not RTV the bottom of your lower timing cover just to be safe. So what you guys need to do, and this is kind of like a quick process. So put your RTV here in the center, okay, avoiding going around these corners as per the Bentley manual so kind of stay towards the middle then when you guys apply your RTV up here on the head gasket that's sticking out because it sticks out a little bit okay there's a little tiny hole here and here on both sides they're really small you have to fill those with RTV um, so you're going to apply your RTV here like normal. Then grab some RTV and kind of smear it into there and into here, making sure that it's flat. If not, it will leak uh, as per the Bentley manual states. Okay. So we're going to apply our RTV first to our lower timing cover right now. Kind of like a cake decorator almost.
Now, RTV, you guys need to make sure when applied, if you're going to put this on your car and it's a running car, not like how we're doing it right now, it's a full engine build. So, um, you let this sucker sit for 24 hours. Don't just go off and try driving and looking for oil leaks because you're going to find them. Uh, you want this stuff to sit for a good minute to do its job. All right. Now, I get all your hardware. So you have a lower timing car, you have lower timing cover hardware and upper timing car cover hardware. So there's long bolt on top. And a whole bunch of tiny little ones. All right, so now we're gonna slap on the upper timing cover. Now the upper one's a little trickier because of the the gasket, so we have to make sure we take our time during the install process. Now they give you two of these uh, shorter Allens which go down here, okay? But we can't put those in until we line them up with these up here. And they're going to go in a little hard because they're not essentially like going in 100%. Like, oh. There we go. That's what we need is for it to go in nice and smooth on its own. the lower and upper timing covers are now installed pretty straightforward um the next step is to do the big crank uh, seal here and then the, the other seal on the other side 
and then the, um, I call it kind of like a front main seal. This is kind of a rear main seal. So yeah, rear main seal, front main seal is what's left. Um, and then that'll be the end of today's DIY for this portion. Next DIY, we're going to be doing the valve cover and oil pan and oil pump and everything else. That will pretty much finish sealing the engine. The next step is everything that goes around the engine. So I'll be right back. Uh, to show you guys how to do the seal here and the other one in just a moment. All right, so we're back guys So I kind of got ahead of myself and I forgot to start filming it, but it's super super simple um, one thing that we guys got to remember when we order or when you guys order your um, This is the rear main seal Make sure you get this brand the uh, L ring it comes with the tool that uh, not the tool but the little old thing to make your life a little bit easier this guy right here so the seal sits already on it and what it does is that it sits nice and flat so that when you put in the seal here it goes over so that way it doesn't flare out the actual seal itself what happens usually when people install seals they tend to flap or bend and what happens is that causes premature failure this little uh, this brand of seal comes with this tool already installed by hand i was able to get it about more than halfway down if you don't have the oem volkswagen tool make sure you have a rubber mallet and an extension a nice little extension about this big about six inches and what you do make sure it's sitting against the uh the crank but do not actually hit it just make sure it sits there and tap it walk it all the way around until it's flush with the uh, actual lower main uh, timing cover. The reason why you need it flush, you wanna prevent anything from here hitting that seal and causing any premature failure of the seal. So now we're gonna be working on the other side of the engine. That's pretty much all done. We have officially installed the lower and upper timing cover and the rear main seal. So now we're at the, uh, the front main seal right here. And this is pretty much just a little arc that goes around. All you're gonna need is again, a little bit of RTV to go around the whole hoop and you're done. And then torque it to spec. Once you have that done, then we'll be able to install the actual seal that belongs up in front. Now you'll see here, there's a nub and a nub. That's why it helps you out to line this sucker up correctly, just like that, okay? Again, the only place that needs sealant right now, since we don't have an oil pan on, is a bead just along this seam right here. You will need sealant down the road for this portion, but that's when we get the pan installed, not now, just so you guys know. All right, now to get some RTV on here. All right, there's six bolts in total. Got one, two, three. Again, these are all 10 millimeters.
And as we always do, we hand tighten everything first. Make sure it goes in nice and smooth. Just like that. And then the torque spec for this, give me a second here, let me look it up. There we go. Uh, seven foot pounds. Again, nothing crazy. And done. Now is to get that new seal on there. Now that seal, again, we're using the same brand seal for the front main seal is what I call it. Okay. You'll see how the Howery has like a little slip-on tool for us. Because what that's letting us do um, is letting us slide pretty much this over without hey everyone pinch out so we ran into an issue i didn't know that my camera died so i had no way of showing you guys the final portion right at the start of the seal that we installed for the lower front main seal so we're going to show you now how to do it super quick it's actually very very easy so back to our rubber mallet method um right here rubber mallet so this is the seal in question, what I call the front main seal. You're going to slide it on uh, using the tool that they provide you. This guy right here. This is the tool I'm talking about. This is what comes in the box with that. It goes on here beautifully just like that. The seal's already on top of it, so you slide it all the way on and it goes in like this. You're going to push in as hard as you can by hand, no other way, and then you're going to grab a socket. The socket that we used for this seal was this guy, I believe. And this is a 35 millimeter. Yep, just like that. And all we did was tap it in place until it's all the way down flush um, with the mallet. So tap, 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 tap until it went all the way down flush to the bottom. That way, this is all going to be flush. Yeah, you're going to damage your paint a little bit because, again, you're tapping something in versus using the factory Volkswagen tool, which is not super easy to get a hold of and not cheap. Uh, so we did it this way. We were able to tap it all the way in and done. Voila, problem solved. Seal is done. All right. Um, so the next DIY you guys are going to watch is pretty much for these guys, but upper and lower. I mean, valve cover, oil pan, oil pump, and pickup tube. That's the next DIY, so you guys can see that as well. But thank you for tuning in uh, for that. Uh, these guys are also, the bolts are at seven foot pounds as well. Okay, guys? Thanks for tuning in at uh, this episode of Peach House Garage with our Patreon built VR6, fully built for factory performance. So in other words, just a rebuild. We didn't do anything crazy besides upgrade the uh, hardware. 
for the bottom end, which is actually notorious for uh, actually being bad on these engines. So that's pretty much it. Uh, but other than that, it looks gorgeous. I love how the uh, what how it came out. I gotta keep this trend going. How clean this looks. So we're gonna keep doing that. I already have all the other parts that are gonna be going on the block. These are all gonna have to be uh, cleaned up, all the hardware cleaned and painted, and see how it turns out after we're done. Thanks for tuning in for this episode of Pinchal's Garage. Thank you guys so much with our Patreon built VR6 because uh, Luis is gonna be a very happy camper with this. All right. Peace out, everyone, and have a wonderful day.